Hey everyone, it's Brian here in Portland, Oregon from Point of Action Physical Medicine and today I just want to give you a tip on dealing with some chronic pain while you're at home. So in the past I've done some foam rolling videos and those videos are still available everywhere that my videos are. So Instagram, Facebook, there's some on my website. So please check those out if you want to do some myofascial release, trigger point, any kind of foam rolling stuff. Um, today we're going to be talking about heat specifically, so I generally recommend heat to most of my patients. I'm not a big fan of ice. Uh, the Ready State did an interview and has some articles about why ice is not the best solution to a lot of things, so I'll leave a link to that extended video. It's about an hour long and then there's an article about it as well if you're interested in learning more about that. Um, but basically ice will numb the area so it will reduce the pain because the area is numb but it also constricts a lot of the blood flow and tightens up the muscles in the area which doesn't really help us solve the problem so with chronic pain uh, adding heat to the area will help expand those things uh, soften the muscle increase blood flow and get things flowing through there to help repair the injury it basically just aids the body in getting it, the area flushed out to help it uh, heal the heal the area of pain so again I do want to emphasize that this is mostly for chronic pain there are some precautions to adding heat to acute new injuries and there are some other things we can do for that but today we're just gonna be talking about heating chronic pain so if you are having chronic pain there are a couple solutions to getting heat obviously if you go to a clinic I have things like the TDP lamp and different kind of heat sources. Uh, moxibustion is a big thing that we use in Chinese medicine as well. So those are ways to add heat. Those are a little bit difficult to do at home. Moxa not so much, but having smoke and stuff like that around the house, some people aren't very excited to do that. So some solutions that I use at home are um, just like an old school style rubber water bottle. Uh, you just get the water as hot as you can from the tap or as hot as your skin can handle. You don't want to burn yourself, but you also don't want to be boiling water and putting it in here because it will damage the product. So you just want to use hot, hot tap water as hot as your body can handle. And then if it's too hot on the rubber, you can wrap it in a towel or wrap it in something uh, to separate from your skin until it starts to cool down. Uh, I use this a lot because it's quick and it's easy. I just take water from the tap and I put it on the area where it hurts and I just let it sit until it gets cold and it lasts maybe 15, 20 minutes and that's about as much as you need uh, in different, th throughout the day, you could do 15 minutes to 20 minutes throughout the day. If you want to do longer, then you just have to refill it, which again, only takes a few minutes, so not a big deal. Uh, something else that I use at home that is a little bit more time intensive and takes a little bit more energy are these heat packs. You may have seen them in clinics and stuff before. They're hydrocolator packs. I actually got this on uh, Amazon and I actually started carrying these in the clinic because I love them and they hold heat really well and it's a moist heat, which I kind of appreciate a little bit more. It feels better on my body. So these are canvas packs and they're filled with powdered clay. So when you get these packs, you have to submerge them in water and allow the clay to absorb all as much water as it can. So they'll get puffy. You can probably see this one's like a little puffy when it first came, it was completely flat. So that takes a couple hours. Once it's soaked for the first time, you don't have to do that process again. So to keep it from being moldy, you need to keep it cold. So what I do is I keep mine in a Ziploc bag and then I just throw them in the freezer. And then when I wanna use them, I, I take them out and the freezer keeps them from growing anything on them. If you're gonna use them regularly, you can uh, leave them in the refrigerator or if you're gonna use them throughout the day, uh, you could just leave them in whatever water you use to heat them up. So heating them up is kind of the tricky part. So I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit, but they recommend like around 70 degrees Celsius. So whatever that translates to. So when you heat them up, they need to be submerged in water. So you can either put them in a bowl and put them in the microwave. And I've never done that before, so I don't know how long it takes. Definitely read the instructions and do what they say to do to heat them up. You can also put them in a pot of water and you just, you, again, you don't wanna boil it because you don't wanna get it too hot because you don't wanna damage the product or burn your skin. 
Um, I know not everybody has this, but I have a sous vide submersion heating device. So it's basically a stick that you send to a certain temperature. So I set the stick to 70 degrees Celsius because that's what they recommend for this. I submerge it in a stock pot and I cover it with water. That stick heats to 70 degrees and it keeps the water at 70 degrees. It never gets hotter than that. And once it reaches that temperature, it heats up when it needs to to hold that temperature. So I can drop these in there. Once it comes up to heat, I let them sit for about 20 minutes so that this thing can absorb the heat. And then I pull it out and use it. That's the easiest way to do it. I got the stick as a Christmas present. I do use it to cook sometimes. I don't know that this is like the greatest use for that product because it's not that's what it's intended to use for, but it works great. I've been doing it for months and I haven't had any issues with the stick. So if you want to take that route, do it on your own um, if you want to do it or not. So like I said, I've personally done it. It's worked for me, but it's up to you if you want to do that. Um, if not, like I said, microwave or the stove. Uh, one thing is when these do come out, 70 degrees Celsius is fairly hot. So I use a pair of tongs to take it out. I put it in a bath towel and I actually wrap it in a bath towel to separate it from my skin because it can burn, it does get hot. So then I just lay the bath towel, like this one is a neck one, so you can see it's kind of shaped for the neck. Throw this over the back here like that and you can feel the moist and the heat it stays hot again for about 20 minutes which is a perfect amount of time um, if you already have the hot water boiling or like i said i use that sous vide stick and i can just drop it right back in there and then it doesn't take as long because the water is already hot and all that other kind of fun stuff that way um, so like i said uh, this is the neck one that i have and then i also have a bigger one so this one is 10 inches by 18 inches so this one's pretty big, so I usually run this down my back spine in that area so it gets the muscles on either side, and then I'll wrap the neck one around the top. It's really awesome, loosens up the whole back, it feels great. Um, they sell different shapes, some that are better for joints. This one's actually pretty great for like the knee or the shoulder as well. It kind of like contours to the body pretty good. But they have other ones that are specific for those joints. And then they also have one, like I said, that one was 10 by 18. That's pretty big. That covers most of my back. They also sell one, I believe that's 18 by 24, which is pretty much like a blanket for your back. It's huge. It's awesome. It would be hard heat up because again, you need something that's big enough to fit that in it with all the water to heat it up. But if you have something like that, it's also available. Um, in clinics, you've probably seen like specific cans that are designed to heat these up. Those are several hundred dollars. They're expensive, but again, these are safe to put in the stove um, or uh, in the microwave. So read the instructions and make sure you're doing what they say. Uh, again, I do have these available at my clinic. If you're in the area, we can set up some kind of way to get you one. If not, uh, like I said, I bought them on Amazon. This brand is Relief Pack. Pack is spelled P-A-K. So I've had these for months and months and they're still working great. I love them. Uh, again, so yeah, if you want to check out any of my foam rolling videos to add to this, uh, all the links are on my link tree. If you are new to foam rolling, you can also get like an intro to foam rolling, like five tips for starting foam rollers. Uh, different mobility to, uh, tools and things like that like lacrosse balls and foam rollers and things like that uh, I have a free PDF uh, download on my website so when you go to my website it should pop up and offer this free PDF the only catch is to get it you have to sign up for my mailing list which I honestly don't send out as much so as I should so you're not gonna get bombarded with emails from that so if you want the foam rolling PDF sign up for my new uh, newsletter and if you also want to check out the ready state article about why not to use ice there will be a link for that in my link tree and uh, newsletter links in my link tree video link YouTube links in my link tree so like basically that's just like the hub for everything that I have so if you're interested in this if you have any questions about this uh, you can call my office number that's on my website. You can email me. Um, yeah, however you want to get a hold of me, feel free to reach out and ask. I can help you figure out how to get these, how to set them up, everything like that. So, yeah, I hope this was helpful. Use heat for your chronic pain. It will help. It will soften 
the muscle, it will relax the area, and it will help you get better and repair the tissue. So that's all I have to say for today. Again, that's uh, Brian from Point of Action Physical Medicine. I'm in Portland, Oregon. If you have any questions, please reach out. Have a good one, guys.